Welcome to the Reddit Chronicles. Today we will be reading from Entitled Parents. Our first post is by Arachnikid. Entitled Parent tries to steal seat because you guys are not even talking, and then she complains we are faking a disability. Hello there ladies and gentle ladies, this wonderful story occurred last Sunday, and I've been ruminating on posting it. So a bit of backstory I, 14M, have ADHD, which causes me to have an awful stutter, and my friend, 14M, has autism and normally wears noise-canceling headphones, earphones, as the noise and light can send him into a meltdown. Because of this we tend to communicate in British Sign Language. As I don't stutter, and he can be in perfect silence. I also was in a very dark space a few years ago, and I regularly go to the gym and go for runs as it gives me time to think, because of this I am pretty hench. My friend and I were strolling along on one of our usual paths that has some really nice views and minimal cars. About halfway into the walk, there is a pub, bar for you yanks, and because the British heat is ridiculous we decided that we would go in and get a lemonade or a shandy, depending on how lucky we were the whole time, communicating in sign language. After took our seats, the last seats under the covered area outside, a woman who I think I'll call Karen walked up to us with a little kid in tow. She loudly boomed in her stuck-up voice, Um boys, I think you'll find those are my seats. See I know the pub owner so you best move besides, you weren't even talking anyway, just take your drink to go. Now ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something we also knew the owner because the owner is my friends, the one who is with me now, dad. I then managed to string together a comprehensible set of words, um we were talking, we were just using sign language. Then the Karen said, oh so you're faking a disability god what is wrong with your generation, seemingly forgetting her brat behind her who is tugging on her hand throwing a hissy fit. Now rather nervous, I managed to stutter out, we're not, though we just prefer to communicate this way. At this point the Karen is screaming a slurry of insults at us asking me to speak up and to just effing move. Shen then tried to grab me and my friend and throw us off the bench. This set my friend off and he started having a meltdown. This caused his father to come outside as he realized that something was wrong. The lady continues to berate me punctuating her word by knocking a finger into her chest at the end of every word. At this point I had had it so I punctuated back. Considerably harder. As the lady was stumbling backwards, she somehow managed to stay upwards despite her blubber. However she had stepped on her child's finger as he was on the floor. In a hissy fit this sent the kid crying harder and her eyes finally landed on our hero of this story. My friend's dad, who was hugging my friend, trying to calm him down. She somehow did not see that he was hugging one of his patrons she assaulted seconds earlier and did not seem to make the connection, so she screamed, Manager, this person just assaulted me. At this point my friend's dad was such a shade of red that if I took my glasses off and squinted, I couldn't tell a strawberry and him apart. He then proceeded to shout a string of expletives at this woman that even I didn't know, since that didn't send the woman packing, he then shouted, I will call the cops if you don't leave right now. This seemed to spur some action into the lady, and she promptly dragged her kid off the floor and scurried away like the vermin she is, leaving one autistic child in a meltdown, me pretty miffed a crack in the brand new decking from where she stumbled back and dents from where the kid was throwing a tantrum on the floor and stamping his feet, plus one angry pub owner, Drinks were nice, though got something considerably harder than a shandy, to calm the nerves as he said. But had to cut our walk short, as my friend was still not in the best state. Next up, posted by Naive Time Traveler. Entitled parent upset cause their kid won't sleep without visiting our cats every day, and we said no, our neighbors, who live in the same house, have a three-year-old son, and we have three indoor cats. One day the father knocked on the door, telling us his son lately grew fond of cats, and if it was possible that his son can see our cats, we let them in, but it turned out the boy still has two left hands when it comes to animals, and his father doesn't interfere when the kid chases them, screeches at them like a siren, pulls them on their tails and throws hard toys at them. As you can guess we weren't too pleased. Next day, same time in the evening, father and kid knock on our door the father demanding that his son can meet the meow meows again. This time my husband opened the door and was somewhat of surprised by them requesting a visit again, blindsided let them in again. Same procedure as the day before, 
a solid half hour of screeching and chasing the scared and startled cats. Day three, we just sat down for dinner. The father knocks on our door, letting us know that it's his son's bedtime and that he's ready to play with his meow meows. I kindly but clearly explained that we're just about to have dinner and that we cannot make this a daily play date, cause our cats are not happy about this, as they are not used to children and one of them blind. I told him it's too much for the animals, my husband and I are both working full time, and our evenings, having dinner together, is our relax, time we would like to spend alone. The following two hours we heard the kid screaming his head off, demanding to meet his meow meows followed by furious knocking on our door, which we opened to our very angered neighbor pointing on his son's blue from crying face, yelling at us that this sad face should make us think about the consequences of decisions we make for other people. His son won't sleep anymore without seeing his beloved meow meows. Yes, he seriously kept using this term, and also the possessive adjective. I tried to solve this in a civilized manner by keeping calm, but pointing out that it wasn't our idea to make seeing our cats his son's getting ready to sleep ritual, and that he cannot expect from us to make this a daily schedule, but we were marked as general child haters already. Two days later our landlord called us to remind us to please not let our cats out in the hallway, cause the neighbor's child is allergic to cats. Next up, posted by Melodic Swordfish. Mother is upset I use my first name in class, obligatory, this happened about two years ago. I teach philosophy and epistemology to high schoolers, I'm also fairly young for a high school teacher, I introduce myself as Faye, my given first name, which has been my given name since birth, to my students. Well, I got an email from a parent reading, Emil Betancourt, this is Karen, and I'm Kevin's mother. I'm deeply disturbed that you allow students to call you by your first name and believe this is unprofessional and confuses children. My child's test scores clearly reflect this as your class is the only one he is struggling in and, as he has maintained an outstanding academic performance, it is clear that you are the problem. I highly suggest that in order to better teach my child, you reflect on this and begin to use your professional name. So I responded, Karen, thank you for reaching out to me. I'm awfully glad you are so concerned with your child's performance in my class. As you might not be aware, I do not grade homework or tests as official standing, and they go only to show an empiricist view of one's performance. Don't worry, this means the grade you see in the system will be different from the final grade, as your child will have a 100% in my class. This was made clear in my syllabus. You should also note that I attach my comments for every assignment and include an annotated copy of your child's exams and essays so that they may see where they need to improve. If you have specifics about concepts your child is struggling with and ways that might better help him learn these concepts, I'd be more than happy to meet with you over coffee or tea to discuss with you. So she responds, the annotations are incredibly vague and abstract and offer little insight into how my child, who is brilliant, may improve. However, I see you mark him wrong every time he refers to you as Emil Betancourt and replace it with Faye. It is illogical to ask of a child to indulge in using such a silly name. I highly advise you quit marking my child wrong for using your professional name in his essays. Likewise, I believe that as you are his teacher you should use your professional name. So I decide to be petty and respond, Thank you for your response, I appreciate how illogical and unsound your argumentation is, as this is a perfect example of Hume's law. I shall be using this to model in-class examples of bad argumentation from now on. Thank you for the free class materials. I got a response back from her but didn't respond. Edit. To the one person who tried to argue I should use my surname, you get A for effort, but A D plus for execution for falling victim to the same logical trap as the mother. I love you though, keep flexing them muscles, you'll get there eventually, there does exist a sound argument. Our final post is by Sinful Little Girl. My monster-in-law gets mad because we visited my parents for 30 minutes. I, a 23-year-old, female and my fiancé, 22-year-old male, are due to be married by the end of 2023. We have been together for four years. There have been many occasions where my mother-in-law has chosen not to include me or go against what I have to say. She has bipolar and fiancé doesn't like his mom. 
He's the third oldest out of four boys. But besides the changing plans last minute for holidays, even though my parents communicated to her what their plans were weeks in advance, this incident makes me so angry. My fiancé and I went to my parents' house for breakfast on a Sunday, because it had been a few months since me and my fiancé got to visit. We stayed for maybe 30 to 45 minutes at my parents' house, and I had to get to work. My work let me go home early so I went home to my fiancé, and he said wanna go out to dinner I said absolutely. We got in the car, and as we were driving, we got a call from brother, where are you guys, are you coming to dinner, my fiancé said, um OP and I are heading to dinner now, did you have something planned? My brother-in-law said, well yeah family dinner is always on Sunday, mom's not gonna be happy. My fiancé then said, you guys always have family dinners on Sunday when OP has to work we keep asking if we can do them on Friday so she can be included, but mom's not budging. Op and I are going to dinner because she got off work early, if mom has a problem she can call me, and he hung up. Not even five seconds later my mother-in-law calls him and screams, what, so her family gets to see you and I don't. Do you know how that makes me feel, my fiancé says, mom, we went to breakfast for 30 minutes, I haven't seen them in over a month, I see you at least three times a week. Don't yell at me or get mad because I'm spending time with OP's family, it wasn't a big deal. Because you are acting this way, I'm not coming over for a while. If you can't respect OP and I then you need to reevaluate yourself. It was silent for a minute then she said in a pissed off sassy voice, so I guess you're not coming to dinner then, fine, and she hung up. My fiancé looked over at me and he said, see this is what I mean, she's AC, I said. I wished she liked me, my fiancé pulled into the restaurant and said, I know you do but I want you to know that no matter what she says to you, it doesn't matter, I love you don't listen to C, he only calls his mom this, no one else, God I love that man. Thank you for listening to the Reddit Chronicles, follow for more content.